and welcome back so in this video we would be looking at message passing we said in the previous video that one of the problems or challenges faced when performing parallel programming is communicating with the processes or the processes so in this particular video we set the stage on how to communicate or how to perform these communications properly so without wasting much time let's get started I'm Joseph Sedem, a tutor at Sedematica. We are glad you are studying high performance computing with us. So, the assumptions to hold. Basically, we assume that a, one processor performs one process at a time. So, by so doing, we can interchange the words processor and process without meaning different things. Bear in mind, one processor performs one process at a time if you don't know what a process means or the processor and all those things then go back to our series on parallel computing and then follow from there when you are done you come back here okay so what is message passing right what is message passing message passing is a process of explicitly sending and receiving messages using point-to-point -point or collective communication. So we are sending and receiving what messages, right? And then what or in which medium or which way are we trying to do it? Point-to-point -point or collective, right? Communications. So what is the message or which message are we sending or what message are we sending? So basically the message we are sending is just a collection of data or array of any particular type. So it could be integers, it could be floats, it could be doubles, it could be anything. It could be doubles, it could be anything, characters or strings. That's the data. Those are the messages that we are sending. Or it could even be special data types too. They are just these are just the messages that we are sending from one point to another right now the communication so how is the communication done or what are involved or what are the things that are necessary for communication to be established right so in a communication we need a sender or a source right someone that ha will send the information or the data right someone that will tell you something the source we need a receiver someone that will listen accept the information or the data you are providing it the receiver or known as the destination and then now when you are sending a message right mostly that we try to wrap this message in an envelope right so the envelope could mean different things but then when i talk about the message envelope you can just look at let's say you have a parcel you want to deliver to someone right now in that parcel is the message or the thing you are sending but the wrapping or the container in which the parcel is in right that's the envelope has the source right so where it is coming from so let's say from you it's coming from you the sender or the source and then who it is going to the destination that's the the receiver the tag let's say it, the there's what is inside is it a letter is it a, a a reply what is it food is it anything the tag and then the communicator who is the one performing the send and receive who is the one executing the tax for you so you can look at it as let's say a delivery service like flip delivery for instance that is taking a package from you and then sending it to a friend right so the flip delivery guy will then take the package right and then on the package would have the source that's who it is coming from and then the destination who it is meant to and then the tag so if that's the, fir the first parcel of the day or the second parcel or the 20th parcel that the delivery guy is sending or is executing then that will be the tag and then the communicator that's the flip delivery or flip service so you see the flip delivery logo here so basically we we are we need this envelope in order to establish a proper 
communication now we also mentioned that it's supposed to be a point-to-point -point communication so point-to-point -point communication basically refers to a one-to-one -one communication between two processing resources that's a sender and a receiver so these are the two one processing resource is sending another processing resource is receiving so basically these are the resources the sender and the receiver point to point is one to one one person is sending one person is receiving so two people or two processes are always involved in this communication now there are two types of the point to point communication we have the blocking and then the non blocking right so the blocking one retains the call retains from call only when the task completes so you can look at the blocking send or receive as the blocking send sorry as what let's say uh the flip delivery guy right that brings your parcel this flip delivery guy brings the parcel and then once the receiver or the person who is supposed to receive this parcel receives the parcel that is when the delivery guy can take or check that parcel has been received in his manual and then do what go back and then do another delivery or other things but if the delivery or the parcel that they is supposed to be sent to an individual and the sender the receiver is not present then he the delivery guy will not check or will not mark this parcel as delivered this package or this parcel will not be given or will not be marked as delivered so it means that the blocking call would wait until the parcel has been given has been delivered before the the delivery person will continue going or doing other deliveries or before he will take that your package has been delivered successfully now the non-blocking call the non-blocking send is basically this one is just look at it as the email you sent a mail not email necessarily a mail right now if you send this mail and it's coming from a source to a destination now what happens is that whether or not the receiver opens his mail these email people the ems or any other emailing service uh, mailing service sorry can keep sending mails to other people right so it doesn't necessarily have to wait till the receiver opens his mail or shows that he has received the message before continue before they continue delivering mails to other people so the non-blocking calls returns from call without waiting for the tax to be completed so basically that's the blocking and the non-blocking now looking at the collective communication we have one to many or many to one so this is a one to many or many to one communication between processing resources so one processor is communicating to the 20 processes at the same time or 20 processes are communicating to one processor at the same time so basically we the we have broadcast operations for instance someone making an announcement at a gathering right at a center where he uses the microphone and then talks now everybody the everybody present there would listen who get so that person is making is broadcasting right sending the information bear in mind that this person doesn't even know the the specific or the particular people that are listening to what he or she is saying right so that's more or less like the broadcast you just say anything and then just give the data out or give information out to everybody that thought that is listening gather in a sense you can look at gather as let's say your course rep is supposed to take assignments right from individuals or from the people in the class so this course rep is just one process that is receiving assignments from the multiple processes so that's gada scatter would be the inverse the reverse he has your assignments and he's distributing he's giving them back to you and then the reduction the reduction operations are also an example of communi collective communication so basically that's point to point and then collective communication now to deal with this communication among processes properly 
we have to make use of some APIs, right? Some application program interface. As I said in a previous video, these are not fully fledged applications, but then they are just, they are also some applications that you can incorporate into your codes or into your programs. That's the application program interface. So the API of interest here is the message passing interface. In the previous video, we didn't mention of the message passing interface and then the open MP where we said OpenMP is used for multi-threading that's establishing parallelism amongst processes within a process while the message passing interface is used to communicate between multiple or interconnect that's multiple processes right so let's look at message passing interface in detail now this is an API for passing messages between processes in a distributed or shared memory model so here the focus is on either distributed or shared so message passing interface can be used to pass messages between processes bear in mind in the shared memory model there are what? multiple cores right that's the shared memory model and the distributed are it could be single core that are connected together or multiple cores that are connected together now, note that the MPI is not a programming language. It's not a programming language. We are still using our normal programming languages, C, Python, MATLAB, and the others, right? But then we, it's a programming model that is what widely used for parallel programming on a parallel computing architecture. You should know what a computing, a parallel computing architecture is by now. If you don't know, you can go back to our series on parallel computing and then know that so this is a programming model which means that you can incorporate it in any programming language at all but this particular series is focusing on the c programming language right now mpi codes run on shared memory process multi processes that's if you have a single processor with multiple cores right and these multiple cores have they are, have a single memory so like your laptops now or your desktop computer now these multiple cores have just a memory right you can run mpi codes on single processor that is the the single cpu with multiple cores on it that are sharing the same memory but note that when you are doing this right note that the memory the same space or the same memory will be allocated for every processor involved in the message passing or in the communication. Keep that in mind. If you are using MPI codes in just a shared memory multiprocessor system, it means that if you have a 16 gig and then you have four cores and your application is making use of four gig RAM, four gig gigabytes, of space or storage to store the data it means that when you use mpi code to run on this system it's going to allocate four gig each for each course in the system that's what happens if you are running the mpi code on a multi-processor machine that's a single machine with multi cores right now in the distributed memory system you also you could also use the mpi distributed we say that each processor has its RAM, right? Each processor has its RAM. So which means that, yes, if your application needs two gig or four gig, once there's more than four gig in each system, it will be given, it will use all the four gig, four gig each in each system. So note this difference. They can be used for both, but then in the situation where you're using for shared, it allocates exact. So you have to make sure you deal with your memory management properly or else you cause trouble and it could also be used on hpc clusters so high performance computing clusters that's the interconnection of multi-core processing elements or processes right so you connect multiple of them together to get a high performance cluster computing cluster now looking at these api these there are different implementations right so different groups of people have this now note that the mpi is 
you have MPI standards, right? So you have MPI 1, MPI 2, MPI 3. That's just enhancement, adding more functions and more things to the MPI API. But then the implementation, the group of people or the packaging that we receive or that are installed on each machines are different, right? So we have one implemented by the MPI CH, right? We also have another one called the Open MPI. We also have the LAM. We also have the the CHIMP, and then we even have some vendor implementations. One implemented by IBM and then SGI and the others. So note that these are different implementations, right? Note that regardless the implementation you use, the codes that you run or you run on one should still work on any of them. Note that the MPI is the standard how you perform the communications between the course but then the implementations are just how some group of people decide to package the things they allow you to do the flexibility they allow while writing the code so note that now we talking about the installation depending on the implementation you have or you want to install you can use this code Know that we are assuming you are on a Linux machine, so you can use the sudo apt install. This option will just say yes. That is saying yes to install this package. That's the MPI CH. This is the MPI CH implementation. If you want to use the open MPI implementation, then you use the open MPI dash binary or dash bin. And if you are using the LAM, you can use this. There are several other implementations, but we are just mentioning a few on my machine i have this so if you like you can just install this and then you follow up with me so basically that's about the installation now in the next video we would look at some basic mpi functions and then see how we can leverage the tools available or the functions available in the mpi api in or to perform our power programming if you like this video please don't forget to like and subscribe and share with your friends we'll see you in the next video thank you